kids, welcome to Building on the Rock. As you know, last week we left off on a little bit of a cliffhanger, with the Ark being stolen. Now, I did spoil it for you, but the Ark ends up back in Israel's hands, after a bit of a terrible circumstances happening to the Steelers. But, let's not talk about sports. You may be wondering, what's this got to do with that? Well, you're going to find out in today's lesson. So, follow me as we do read 1 Samuel chapter 5. The Philistines had captured the Ark of God. They took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. They carried the Ark into the temple of their god Dagon, and they set it down beside the statue of Dagon. The people of Ashdod got up early the next day. They saw the statue of Dagon. There it was, lying on the ground. It had fallen on the face in front of the Ark of the Lord. So they picked the statue of Dagon up. They put it back in its place. But the following morning when they got up, they saw the statue of Dagon. There it was, lying on the ground again. It had fallen in, on its face in front of the Ark of the Lord. Its head and its hands had been broken off. Only the body of the statue was left. Its head and hands were lying in the doorway of the temple. That's why to this very day, no one steps on the bottom part of the doorway of Dagon's temple at Ashdod. Not even the priests of Dagon stepped there. The Lord's powerful hand punished the people of Ashdod and the settlements that were near it. He destroyed them. He made them suffer with growths in their bodies. Now these growths are also called boils. If you've ever had or seen a boil, it's roughly about the size of a quarter, and it goes up about a, like a half circle on your skin, and it'll burst, usually with blood. They're not fatal, but they are extremely painful, and people generally don't want to have them. The people of Ashwood saw what was happening. They said, The Ark of the God of Israel must not stay here with us. His powerful hand is punishing us, and our God Dagon. So they called all the rulers of the Philistines together. They asked them, What should we do with the Ark of the God of Israel? The rulers answered, Have the Ark moved to Gath. So they moved it. But after the people of Ashwood had moved the Ark, the, Lord hand, the Lord's hand punished Gath. That threw its people into a great panic. The Lord made them break out with growths in their bodies. It happens to young people and old people alike. So the Ark of God was sent to Elkron. Now, as you can see, God is not so happy with his Ark being taken from his people. He's like, hey, stop it. You know where to take me. You know this isn't yours. This is my throne. I sit on it, and I don't like you. So how about you go and put me back? But they haven't quite figured it out yet. So they move it again and again, and they get punished again and again. Not killing everyone, because if he killed everyone, then they simply wouldn't be able to move him. He's simply getting them to say, this is a bad thing to have with your people. Move. It is not a deadly punishment, as he has often done with the Israelites who know better, but with the Philistines, he is simply giving them a punishment that makes them recognize that they are doing something wrong rather than something that they knew was wrong and they did anyway. That's the difference in the punishments. So even though they are worse people than Israel, they do not know they are worse people and so they are merely given suffering rather than the ultimate, ultimate price of death. So the Ark of God was sent to Elkron. As the Ark was entering Elkron, Elkron, the people of the city cried out. They shouted, They have brought the ark of the God of Israel to us. They want to kill us and our people. So they called all the rulers of the Philistines together. They said, Send the ark of the God of Israel away. Let it go back to its own place. If you don't, it will kill us and our people. The death of so many people had filled the city with panic. God's powerful hand was punishing the city. Those who didn't die suffered with growths in their bodies. The people of Elkron cried out to heaven for help. Now we move into chapter 6, where we get to the part where these guys come into play. There's multiple, but I can't build multiple. The Ark of the Lord had been in Philistine territory for seven months. The Philistine called for the priests and those who practiced evil ma magic. They wanted their advice. They said to them, What should we do with the Ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it back to its place. They answered, If you return the Ark of the God to Israel, be sure... 
Don't send it away empty. Be sure you send a guilt offering to the God along with it. Then you will be healed. You will find out why, your, why his hand hasn't stopped punishing you. The Philistines asked, What guilt offering should we send to him? Their advisors replied, There are five Philistine rulers, so send five gold bottles of the gross that are in your bodies. Also send five gold bottles of rats. Do it because the same plague has struck you and your rulers alike. Make miles of the gross and of the rats that are destroying your, the country. Pay honor to Israel's God. Perhaps his hand will stop punishing you. Maybe it will stop punishing your gods and your land. Why are you so stubborn as Pharaoh and the people of Egypt were? God was very hard on them. Only, when they, only then did they send the people of Israel out. Only then did they, send them, did they let them go their own way. So, what the priests are saying here is they do not have a solution to stop the plagues except literally taking the problem and moving it somewhere else. They cannot fix it, as you know, with uh, Exodus, the e evil demonic magic of the priests of Egypt were able to replicate most of the plagues, except the final plague, the Passover. But with this, they don't even have a cure. They have no way to fix this, except doing what God asks. And they even mock the Philistines and their foolishness, saying, Why do you resist? You cannot stop their God. He will do what he wants, he, and if you don't let him, he will make you suffer. This is the way of God, and this has always been the way of God, our God. He does what he plans to do, and whenever we try to get in the way, he doesn't let us. He doesn't let us have our way over his. That's not to say he hates us. He loves us and he wants us to do his path because he understands the universe better than we can ever can and he knows his path is the best. It is like asking a master master tactician in chess why he made a move. He's not going to tell you because telling you, quite frankly, inhibits the power of the move and he wants to get his master plan in place. The issue is, we don't have to move the black pieces. We can be on God's team. And he has already made the checkmate. It's just going to take a couple more moves. Or rather, he's given people who still fight for the other team a chance to get any sense of forgiveness. There is no winning when you fight God. There is merely a delaying of the inevitable. Now this here is the example of that. A rat, kind of resembling a rat, I wanted to put eyes on it, but that doesn't make sense if it's gold, with a boil on top. It's hurting, and it has been plagued. But it is a gold in reference to God, because God uh, is the pure, and He molds us like gold. Because if you've never actually held gold, it's actually quite flexible, much like a Play-Doh, though not nearly as breakable. We are molded like gold, and it's up to us if we want to stay in God's molding, or if we want to try and make our own and inevitably fail. As you can see, the Ark is being returned to God's land, and God has done what he planned to do all along. I uh, hope you enjoyed this lesson this week, and I'll see you at the building section. To start, you're going to need two yellow, dark yellow, two by fours, and place them with three studs to the side right, for both edges. See? One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, once you have that, you are going to need this one by two with uh, two studs on the side and another dark yellow two by, f two by four. Attach it like so with the, uh, the anti-studs on the bottom right there and connect it right next to the uh, uh, legs. 
Once you have that in place, you're going to attach a couple pieces that won't quite make sense yet, but they will in context. You're going to attach this uh, 1 by 3 uh, p dark yellow piece and this light yellow 1 by 2. You can attach the 1 by 3 right there, leaving 3 studs back there and 2 studs right there. And then you're going to attach at the end this uh, 1 by 2 which makes a little tail. Once we add the body, this uh, yellow 2x4, which attaches starting here at this stud and ending where it ends, making the tail and the head connected. And finally, this would be a nice little rat. It's not particularly uh, detailed, but I mean, it's a rat. It doesn't need to be pretty. Then we're going to attach these 2x2 uh, two two light yellow pieces on top to represent the boil. Now, what it says in the scripture is that they made uh, 5 golden boils and 5 ra golden rats. They didn't attach the golden boils to the rats or make it as one model, but for the sake of having a set instead of just having two studs on the side, it makes more sense to attach it like so. Leaving Two, two studs right there, two studs right there, nice and bare. And there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little build, and I'll see you next week.